I'm John Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to take a look at one way in which we can experiment with audio editing. Now, when I say one way, that's because there are lots of ways in which audio editing can be really useful in Logic. Maybe you've recorded a multi-track vocal project into take folders, and you want to select different bits to put together a comp. Well, that's a different technique to the one that we're going to be looking at here. In this particular instance, we're going to learn how we can take bits of audio that don't belong together, put them side by side, and kind of manage the transitions from one section of audio to another. Let's have a listen to the track we're going to be working on. This is just the sort of bare bones of the backing track. Okay, pretty straightforward, just four bars. Now, what I want this track to have is a pad over the top, but actually what I want to do is to use the best bits of three separate pad sounds. I want a pad that's a bit brighter, one that's a bit murkier, and maybe one that's just quite dark. And I then want to be in a position where I can effectively chop from one section of pad to another. Now, the only problem with doing that is that if I'm working with MIDI performances, Often pad sounds have quite long attack times, which means that I can't get the kind of rhythmic transition from one section of audio to another that I can when I work with audio. So what I'm going to start by doing is taking my three separate pad sounds and I'm going to bounce them down as audio. So let's just have a listen to each one in turn. This is pad one. This is pad two. And this is pad three. Okay, some nice detune there on the end of that pad. So the first thing I need to do is to, I'm gonna unmute all three of these. And the first thing I want to do is to turn them all into audio. I'm gonna do that by bouncing them in place. To do that, I'm going to control click on the first region, bouncing places up here for me because it's one of the most five most sort of recent uh, techniques that I've used or tasks that I've used. If it's not in the list for you, just come down to bounce and join, and then we're gonna bounce this pad in place. I want to mute the original pad, so I'm going to select that option here. And I want to make sure that any audio tail, which there's bound to be because there's a release time to this pad, is included not only in the file, but also in the region. So when it gets put into Logic in track, effectively I've got all of the decay phase and the release phase of this pad included in the file. Otherwise, I'm happy to just call this pad1 underscore BIP for bounce in place. That's fine. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm then going to do exactly the same thing for pad2 which I can do very quickly because those settings are going to be the same and the same thing for pad three. And of course, bounce in place is within that recently used list for us now because we've used it three times. So I've now got three MIDI tracks, which are kind of redundant. They've all been muted. I'm going to put those up here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give all of my pads a slightly different color. So we're going to be able to differentiate between them really easily. Um, let's just give um, these colors to the pads. Okay, so we've got pad one, pad two, and pad three. And if I press play, we'd hear all three of them playing back together. But that isn't quite what I want to do. What I want to do instead is to be in a position where I can create a kind of rhythmic transition from one pad to another. So maybe a good thing to do to start with be, be to select all of these, grab the scissors tool, and maybe create that rhythm that I'm thinking about. Do I want a sort of smooth transition from one region to another, or do I want something which is going to be a little bit more dynamic? Well, we could experiment with both. What I'm going to start by doing is grabbing these scissors, as I say, and I'm going to chop at the beginning of bar two. And because all three of these pads are selected, all three of them, uh, all three of them are going to chop at that point. And I'm going to do the same thing again here, halfway through um, bar two. And then what I'm going to do is to repeat that rhythm. So I'm going to have a whole bar at the beginning of bar three. And then what we'll do is to split bar four in half. Okay, so what I've now got is an opportunity effectively to switch between these regions. If I decided that I wanted to start with pad two, I could mute the first one and um, the third one, just leaving this slice in the middle. Maybe what I then want to do is to morph across to pad one at this stage. So I'm going to mute these two. And then what I want to do is to morph to pad three for the last section like this. And what I'm going to do is to repeat that 
by selecting the regions I don't want for the second half. Now you can see what I'm doing is holding down shift and clicking on the regions I don't want to use. And having selected them all by clicking on them, what I can then do is control M to mute them. And what that's then gonna do is to select these bits of audio for me, and I can see whether or not these are the sections I want to work with. Let's hear this in the track, and if we need to, we'll solo this in a moment. Okay, well that's kind of working, but there are a couple of things that we can do which are just gonna help smooth the transitions from one um, bit of our pad sound to the next. The first thing I'd say is that pad one feels like the quietest of the three to me. And what I want to do is to make sure that I've got sort of um, the same sort of gain applied to each three. Gain by gain, I sort of mean the sort of level inherently present in the track. Now what I can do is to select all of the regions for pad one and I can create a gain offset up here. I'm gonna add five dB to this pad and what you'll see is that the waveform has just grown because that pad sound has got louder and very roughly to my eye it looks a little bit more like it's in keeping with pad two which is here obviously it's a slightly unexact science that but that certainly looks like it's got a bit more level to it and similarly pad three well that's maybe a little bit loud so what I'm going to do is to take two and a half dB off pad three let's hear whether or not the balance between those is better now as well Okay, now what I'm gonna do next is to solo them and just hear what they sound like as one gives way to the next. Okay, now as is almost inevitably the case when we simply just chop up any sound through a particular endpoint to have another part give way, then effectively what happens is we get these clicks. And the reason for that becomes very clear when we actually look at a specific waveform. Let's take pad one, which is up here. I'm gonna double click on this section and what we're gonna have a chance to do is to see this track and we're gonna be able to see its waveform. And if what I do is to zoom in on this, I'll make this a little bit bigger so we can see it clearly. If I zoom in on this, what we're gonna discover is that sure enough what I've done is to just chop and because I've just chopped at bar two you can see that I've chopped kind of into the waveform of this file this isn't what we call a zero crossing a point where the audio literally passes through zero instead what's happened is that it's basically just been chopped while the waveform is active and as a result of that it's going to click because effectively the volume is trying to start halfway through or at some point during the cycle of that audio which produces these clicks so what I need to do next is to produce a sort of what I would call a sort of comp track. I'm gonna create a new audio track down here, which I can do by pressing plus, creating a new audio track, and I'm gonna hit create. And what I'm actually going to do is to copy the sections that I'm using down to this track. Now again, the shortcut for copy is uh, option. So I'm just literally selecting the active regions and I'm copying them down here. Now this track is currently muted. So what I'm going to do, or at least the others are soloed. So what I'm going to do is to unsolo them. And in fact, I'm going to mute the original pads. And now we've got our kind of comp pad track down here. I could even call it that just so I know what this is. This is effectively a comp or a, um, a sort of consolidation of the parts of the audio files that I want to use. So how am I gonna get round the clicking uh, problem? Well, one way to do that would be to create uh, crossfades from one section of audio to another. A crossfade, as its name suggests, literally fades out the end of one file at the, at the same time as fading in the next file. So in other words, what I want to do is to have pad two sort of last after pad one starts and for pad one to just get ever so slightly teased in in terms of its volume before its region actually starts. So in other words, we get this kind of crossfade at that point which just smooths the edges of this transition. Now that I can do that either just simply across these two regions or across all of the regions that I've got selected by drawing a box around them, I can select them all at once. And then what I can do is to create a crossfade up here. Now. In the top left hand corner I have an opportunity to choose the type of fade that I want to create and I can see the default option here is a fade out but what I want to do is to use a crossfade which is here. Now there are actually a few different options here. I'm going to start with just the regular crossfade which is this option right here and then what I can do is to type in the value that I want to use here. So let's start with let's say a quarter of a second or 250 milliseconds. That's actually quite a generous crossfade. It doesn't sound like a very long 
long period of time, but a quarter of a second is going to be plenty of time for one bit of pad to make its way through to the next, and hopefully for those clicks to be gone and a slightly smoother response to have sort of come through. And certainly the clicks have gone. Now, can we shorten those down so that we still get this slightly percussive quality as we move from one section of audio to the next without such a smooth transition? Well, let's try a crossfade of 10 milliseconds. Well, that is working. We've lost the clicks, but we've got our sort of percussive quality back so that we can hear the obvious steps moving from one pad to the next. Let's put that back into the mix for a moment and see what that sounds like alongside uh, the beats and bass line. What I did there was just to make sure that this track is stereo. When I first created this audio track, it was actually mono. And when I copied those regions down, it didn't automatically turn into a stereo file. So what I've done is to sort of uh, make sure that we're in stereo by clicking this button here. And now we're getting all of the sort of rich lushness of this pad. Now, so far that's working really nicely. I could actually go further and create some other changes which would require us to look at fades in a slightly different way. What I'm going to do this time is to think, okay, what I'd like to do is to not have such a smooth pad response, but maybe one which is a bit more chopped up and gated. Now, there are a few ways that I could achieve that. I could actually use a noise gate, but I'm going to go back to my scissors and what I'm going to do is to say, okay, I'm going to select um, the uh, first pad here. And what I'm going to do is just to focus on this section and I'm going to click at the first 16th note, which is here. Now you can see that straight away when I do that, my finger's down on the mouse. We can see that when I do that, let me just go back and do that again. This little pop-up shows me I've got this option to divide. You can see it says that next to the scissors. Now, if at the same time I hold down the option key, I get an opportunity to toggle to a multiple divide. And when I select that option and let go with the mouse, what actually is going to happen is that I'm going to get multiple chops of whatever length I specified here. So having clicked on the first 16th note, I've now got a row of 16th notes. All of these are individual slices of audio now. Now the advantage of that becomes clear when I select all of them and let's say click in the bottom right hand corner and just drag them back. So now what I'm going to get is all of these individual little slices of audio. Now, we already know that every time we just simply just chop into an audio file, it clicks. And the same thing is going to happen here because I've now got lots of slices of audio file. So what I need to do now is to do two things. I need to manage the beginning of the audio file with a fade in. I want this to be percussive and gated and attacking. So I'm going to select a really short two second fade in. And now my crossfades are meaningless. I'm not trying to crossfade between these different slices of audio. What I need instead is a fade out. So what I'm going to do is to select fade out here. I'm going to select all of my slices of audio and I'm going to put a five millisecond fade out on the end. Now to see those, I need to zoom in to an individual file. Here's my two millisecond fade in and there's my five millisecond fade out. And I can see that those have been applied to all of these first regions. Let's just solo it and see what it sounds like. Okay, so we've still got a few little clicks there. So what I'm gonna do is to elongate the uh, fade-ins on the front. Let's make them 10 milliseconds and let's maybe take the uh, fade-outs on the end up to 10 as well. Okay, that's working nicely. Did you spot the click? Sure enough, there's one here now because this file doesn't have a fade in. So what I'm gonna do is to add a 10 millisecond fade into that too. And I like that effect. So I'm gonna take out that region and I'm going to replace it with these ones at the front. Now, because they've been chopped up, they definitely feel a bit quieter to me. So I'm gonna keep those ones selected. I'm gonna select these ones too. And again, I'm gonna create a new gain offset for these. I'm gonna turn them all up by four dB. So I've got the chord from the beginning of my track here now playing in that gap, but I think that might be okay. Let's have a listen. A 
But if at any stage what I wanted to do was to make each of these gate slices a little bit longer, remember they're all currently selected, I can see they're highlighted. So what I could do is just to be to click in the bottom right hand corner and just drag out this area just to make each slice a little bit longer. So what we've done in this video is to begin to look at audio editing. We've specifically looked at taking individual MIDI regions and turning them into audio, and then creating a kind of comp track from our favorite sections. What we then learned is how we can crossfade from one section to another, one individual audio region to the next, making sure that we lose the clicks that are an inevitable kind of byproduct of simply just chopping in to any audio region. And then what we've done is to experiment with both fade in and fade outs. We tend to think of fade outs as being long things that happen at the end of tracks that maybe fade out over 10 seconds. But what we've learned here is that tiny, really short fade ins and fade outs can stop individual clicks being added to regions like these super chopped ones, whilst at the same time giving us this kind of gated feel, which takes a pad sound, which would otherwise have far too long an attack sound, uh, time, and uh, become something which is kind of gated, dynamic, and rhythmic within our mixes.